makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Old friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half-hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he was Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia. <laughs> exactly one week from today is it going to be biggest day of the year for all America. Election day. <laughs> this is the day the people, they stay up until 4 o'clock in the morning. Everybody is a nervous, a drink a coffee and a smoke. Walk up and down all night to worry. And a mamma mia, you should see. Is it like the whole country is having a baby? <laughs> I'm remember when I'm a first to come here two years ago in 1948. All over I'm here to talk about the general election. Come and vote in a general election. I'm heard so much about a general election, I'm a thought for sure, was it between a General Eisenhower and a General MacArthur? <laughs> but a wonderful thing about election, Mamma Mia, is that the votes mean the people. And election day is when the little, they become a big. Because when they go in, that the little people's a boot, nobody can tell them what to do. Yeah, here is a privacy to vote, Mamma Mia. You walk into a little booth, which is like a telephone booth. Only difference is that when you're waiting for a woman to come out of vote in a booth, you got a chance to go in. <laughs> but if you're waiting for a woman to come out of telephone booth, you should go home because she's never come out. <laughs> And the last time I'm a remember a woman who didn't even come out of voting a boat. Pasquale is a fat daughter. She's a voted, then it took two men half a day to pull her out. <laughs> but now's the time to go to my night school, so I write the more later, Mamma Mia. I can hardly wait for the day when I'm a can of vote. America, I love you. You like a papa to me, from ocean to ocean. Are you Luigi going to school? Yeah, that's what I thought. Sir. Hey, how's the new fruit to start? Ah, same old thing, Luigi. The people are eating me out of my business. <laughs> Who are you going to vote for the next Tuesday? Next Tuesday? You mean it's election already? Sure, that's who you're going to vote? Yeah, I'm voting for tomatoes to come down and set the bar. <laughs> oh, you good a kid, Astro, but... but ain't Luigi, you gonna... who's got time to look over the ticket? Personally, I'd rather spend the day in bed. Huh? Oh, you're making a joke, huh? I bet you're going to be the first one on the line the next Thursday. Oh, sure, sure. That, that, that's all I got to do. Yeah. I can just see what happens if I'm not there. The counting of votes, and suddenly a congressman yells, Hey, wait, fellas, hold everything. Sam Ostrow's vote is missing, so let's hold the election all over again. Oh, Ostrow, I'm not going to understand how you're going to make a fun of a such important thing. After no, all, you... Who's making fun? It's a matter of dollars and cents, Luigi. When I go to vote, right away I lose two hours away from the fruit store. My wife takes over by the counter, and what happens? She hands out change like she was the Marshall Plan. <laughs> sure, I I'll help give a guy a job in Washington if he'll help out once in a while with my fruit stand. Ah, oh. well, is it getting late? Yeah, yeah, I got to close. What a day. Three in the morning down in the market, close at eight. Why didn't I take that job at the steel mill? I don't know, and a goodbye, Austin. Yeah, so long. 
Yeah. Oh, hello, Mr. Pellegrin. How's the twins? Oh, fine. And now I've got to tell them about it. Oh, really? They're starting to look different? No, but one is a sock and is a towel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Pellegrin, who are you going to vote for next week? Huh? We've got to vote again? Sure. What's the matter with that president of Truman? He can't hold his job. <laughs> well, it's not for the president, Mr. Pellegrin. Then I'm not going to vote. I only elect the president. Yeah, but Mr. Pellegrin, it's important that you should vote every year. Oh. And who's going to watch my twins? The army? Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Mr. Pellegrino, maybe I'm going to watch the twins for you. Oh, that's uh, nice. Maybe I'll vote for you, huh? <laughs> Is it going to seem possible? Astro and uh, Mrs. Pellegrino. They both worked so hard to get their purpose. Oh, Mr. Basco. Oh, oh, Mr. Amate. How's the insurance business? Never better. Say, isn't the time we had that little chat, Mr. Basco? You know, I don't think you're carrying quite enough insurance. Oh, what's the difference? After I'm a die, the money you give me is not going to make me happier. Well, still, Mr. Basco. Excuse me, Mr. Matt. I'm going to get something more important to ask you. What are you doing election today? Not a thing. I'll be glad to talk insurance with you then. And are you going to vote then? Well, if I get a chance to, yes. But I think I'll be very busy. You see, election day is a rare occasion when I find most people home. Business first, you know. Mr. Matt. <laughs> You was a born in America. You gotta vote. Got to. Mr. Basco, this is a free country. I don't have to do anything. Mamma mia. It looks like the next Tuesday, the only ones that's gonna vote is the fellas who wanna be elected. <laughs> All right, class, attention. Since we're a little late, I'll dispense with the roll call today. No roll call. Miss Spalding, you've got to call the roll. Well, why, Mr. Schultz? Why, otherwise, we might not all be here. You call on somebody to answer a question and find out you're talking to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, fellow boobers. Oh, I'm so comic. <laughs> Never mind, Mr. Schultz. Mm. Now, class, since next Tuesday's election day, I asked you to study the chapter on public elections in your civics book. Are there any questions now before we begin our discussion? I'm a spoiler. Yes, Mr. Basco? What's to happen if everybody's too busy next Tuesday and nobody votes? Him and Luigi, that would be a catastrophe. We'd be stuck with the same people we got in office today. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, that's a terrible answer. We're not stuck with anybody. Some people were voting to retain and... But I'd rather let someone in the class answer. Uh, Miss Spaulding, if you don't mind, it would give me the greatest pleasure to supply some necessary points to the class. Well, please do, Mr. Olsen. With pleasure, Miss Spaulding. <laughs> now, first of all, Luigi, it would be impossible for all not to vote. But the importance of voting is manifold. Voting is the biggest civic duty of the citizen. With voting, we keep the good people in office and we keep the fakers out. In that way, we meet our justice. Yes, go on. Also, we have one of the few countries left in the world where real democracy exists, and when we vote on election day, we are setting an example for the rest of the world. And if we don't go out and vote, that is being unpatriotic. <laughs> Himmel, how can a man be so right and so and so wrong? <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please. Hey, Austin, are you going to vote on a Tuesday? No, oh, certainly, if it don't rain. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Olson, you're not serious. Oh, Miss m- Spaulding, I, I spoke too fast. Uh, hey, you see, Mrs. Spaulding, everybody's a laugh. That's uh, how everybody is. They don't realize what they're saying or what they're doing. Luigi, you hit an important point. Indifference. Even Olson, who believe me because I know him for years, is a perfect citizen, would get worried about rain. And that's the way it goes all over. Hey, you're right, the Horowitz. By golly, anybody who doesn't vote on election day should lose his citizenship papers. If I had my way, people who don't vote would be put in jail. Yeah, in 1952, we'd have a warden in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> well, we needn't resort to such drastic measures, Mr. Horowitz. But it certainly isn't a laughing matter. Getting the vote out has become a serious national problem. Uh, if I remember correctly, Schultz. You didn't vote in the last election. Oh, oh, me? Oh, uh, uh, oh yeah, uh, bronchitis. I had bronchitis. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Schultz. I don't remember you with bronchitis. Uh, well, it wasn't exactly me. It was my wife, Frida. <laughs> <laughs> Frida? 
I, isn't that the year she was with her mama in Florida? <laughs> All of a sudden, everybody is an FBI man. <laughs> It was my small of baby that had it the bronchitis. <laughs> Here, but I should say, your baby's not even at two years old. All oh, right, so I fell asleep in the movies. I didn't vote. I'm a Benedict Arnold. Shoot me. <laughs> I don't know. Years ago, if you voted, they said you was a crook. You got two dollars. <laughs> Today, if you don't vote, you're no good either. You can't win. That's just it, Mr. Schultz. Today your vote means more than it ever did. You mean it counts twice? <laughs> no, and listen, please. All the world looks to America for its lesson in democracy, and America looks to its people to practice that lesson. It's like asking us to do ourselves a favor. Exactly. Hey, Schultz, are you going to vote on a Tuesday? Well, to be honest, with Tuesday off, we get a four-day weekend, and I promise to visit my sister in Milwaukee. Oh, huh? that's just ridiculous. Yo, but, Schultz, supposing everyone in Chicago followed your example and did what you are doing. But that's impossible. My sister's only got two bedrooms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's the use? Well, good night, Miss Good night, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Miss Balding. Yes, Mr. Basco? Miss Balding. Why do people like that? Well, I don't know, Mr. Basco, but here's a fact that'll shock you. In 1948, 45 million eligible voters failed to cast their vote. 45 a million? Is it not impossible? Well, it's a fact. We take voting so much for granted, we abuse the privilege. And that's a big fact about people, Miss Spalding. Is it not until we cut off our noses till we realize how much we smell? <laughs> Miss Balding, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm not say right, uh, but you know what I mean. I'm very much worried. And on my way to school tonight, I speak to three people. Same thing. Well, there's no use worrying about it, Mr. Basco. There's not much you can do. Yeah, sure, there is. Must be something I can do. I know what it feels like not to, to be able to vote. I'm going to tell it to everybody else, and that's what I'm going to do. Make them understand that they've got to vote. You're going to be like Paul Revere. Go through the neighborhood and warn them of impending disaster. Well, no, but I'm going to warn them they've got to vote. That's what I'm going to do. Just like a Paul Revere. Two Adams, two Adams, elections are coming. Well, i better make a note of my appointment book. Let's see. Tuesday, November 7th. Shopping, beauty parlor, lunch... Appointment at... One of these has to go. Be sure to vote. Before we return to Life with Luigi, we'd like to mention one of the reasons millions of people all over the country chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. Naturally, they enjoy the refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint flavor, but besides that, chewing on a good piece of gum gives a person comfort and satisfaction, especially when he's under strain or tension. Well, these are tense times, and more and more people are finding out that chewing Wrigley's Spearmint helps them feel a bit more relaxed. It makes the going a little easier and pleasanter. Try it and see for yourself. Chew a few sticks of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. You'll enjoy the pleasant chewing, and you'll find it helpful, too. And now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother and it. And so, Mamma Mia, even though I'm not going to vote... I'm going to find a very important job for myself for this selection. I'm going to be Paul Le Revere. Of course, I'm not able to make 45 million people a vote. Even a Paul Le Revere couldn't do that unless he was riding a jet airplane. <laughs> but I'm going to go around. I'm going to wake up the neighborhood one by one. And the first one I'm going to do is my countryman, Pasquale. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Ha, hello, Pasquale. Hey, Pasquale, is there something I'm going to ask you? Sure, little banana nose. <laughs> Anything I can do for you, I'm glad to oblige. As long as it's under two dollars. 
Well, no, you're not the money, Pasquale. Hey, Pasquale, you know what the day is the next Tuesday? What day is the next Tuesday? It's a Tuesday. What do you think I am, a maroon? <laughs> no, 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 Pasquale. Every year, what's a happen on the first Tuesday after the first Monday, Monday in November? Oh, yes, the eclipse of the sun. <laughs> no, you're not to that, Pasquale. Thanksgiving a day? No. Luigi, don't tell me the president pushed Christmas eight week back. <laughs> What's the matter? You hinting for something? No, I'm hinting for nothing. Next week is election a day. Election a day? Well, why didn't you say so? How am I supposed to know? Am I running up a governor or something? All right, all right, Pasquale. Now, now don't get excited. I'm just to want to be sure of one thing. Don't forget to vote. Sure, I'm not forget to vote. What's the matter, cabbage, you puss? You running up a city dog catcher? <laughs> no, Pasquale. I'm just doing what I think is my duty to remind the people to vote. Means a lot to me. Well, sure, Luigi, if it's a mean a lot to you, I'm a vote. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Pasquale. Hey, you're my very good friend. Now I'm going to do you a little favor. <laughs> Maybe you're going to do me a little favor. <laughs> a little favor? Well, sure, Pasquale. That's the favor. You vote to two. I can't. You know I'm not the fullest citizen. I'm I'm not the got a right to, to vote. Well, maybe not for the Democrats or Republicans, uh, but you can vote for certain other party. Certain? Who are other party? My daughter Rosa. <laughs> That's what are you crazy? Rosa's not running for anything. She is a two. She's a running for the job of Mrs. Luigi Bosco. She's a never gonna get elected. Then I ain't the voter <laughs> But, Mother Pasquale, you like America, no? Yes. You happier here than in the other country, no? Yes. Then why don't you be good a citizen and help your new country keep his freedom? Why don't you promise to vote? I tell you why. Because I forgot to register this year. What? <laughs> oh, Pasquale, that's a terrible. No, it ain't. In 1952, I voted twice. <laughs> Pasquale, I see there's no use with you. I'm going to go now and do something for the other people in the neighborhood. Where'd you take my advice? You ask her for trouble. Pasquale, trouble with you is you ain't got the American spirit. What are you talking about? I got a more American spirit in my head than that colonial jugger you got in your antique store. That's right, Pasquale. You got the biggest jugger head I know. Goodbye. <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm going to say it, it's a come out of different. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. What's the matter, Mr. Basco? Sick or something? Sandy, promise me something. What? Soon as you're 21 years old, you got to run right out on the boat. Well, sure, but what brought that on? Well, everywhere I'm going to go, people take the right to vote for granted. I'm even made some posters of myself. Vote the Tuesday. Sure, my friends, they put them in the store windows, but they laugh at me. Mamma mia, they don't know what they're doing. Why, if it was up to me, I would have bought the three times a day after each meal. <laughs> People mean well, Mr. Basco. We're, we're, we're forgetful. Well, I'm going to like to do something that's to make them all forget. You know, Sandy, if I'm on the dozen newspapers, I would have make the people remember. Well, I know a place you can make your own newspapers. My own? Huh? Sure. There's a place down on Adams. Guy prints up a novelty paper with your own headline for a dime. For a dime? Make any headlines I'm going to want to? Sure. Looks just like the real thing, too. Mamma mia. I'm a got an idea. Sandy, when I get it through with my idea, there's going to be so many people are voting in this neighborhood, they're going to have enough of votes left over for next election. <laughs> Did you see this newspaper? And how? Ain't it the worst? Look at that headline. Right to vote to taken away. Somebody better call up a United Nations and a complain. Hey, did you two see... Oh, you got a paper, too. Who could do such a thing? Uh, who's in a charge in a Washington? The neighborhood's up in arms. Come on down the block. There's a meeting on the corner.
What's everybody running about? Look at this paper. Right to woe taken away. Himmel. Oh, wait till I get a hold of my congressman. man. I'm going to tear him into pieces. Yes, sir. And we are going to march to the state capital and demand that we be allowed to vote. Hey! Hey! America ain't America without the right to vote. Hey! Hey, here's Schultz. What do you say, Schultz? Him is the best audience I've ever had, and I can't think of a thing to say. <laughs> Just a minute. My friends, if I promise, if I'm elected... Oh! Oh! Schultz says there's no time for yoking. Are uh, we going to stand around here and hey, do nothing? Hey, hey, what's going on here? Uh, there is a plenty going on yeah. here. Oh, Officer Flanagan, just look at this. Right to vote, taken away. Right oh, oh so you stirred up like the rest of the jokes. Can't you see this paper's a fake? Who would publish that daily bombshell? Uh, uh, You're all too busy getting excited, you can't even see how silly this is. Well, who put it out? Well, I tracked it down to the novelty store. It was all perpetrated by your old bosom pal. As in mine, too, I'm sorry to say. Luigi Basco. Luigi? Schimmel, the way he was talking before, I knew he was dead for Schimmel. Where is he now? Huh? Where do you expect he is? I had to haul him in. in jail. And he's cooling his heels right now, waiting for the judge. Oh, oh. Now, just sit there quietly, you two. Your case comes up next. Thank you, Mr. Policeman. While he's in my care, I guarantee he's not going to escape. Pasquale, what am I going to do? That's the worst of trouble I've ever been in in my life. I'm afraid it's too late, Luigi. After the barn door is stolen, you want to help her from the horse. <laughs> Luigi, you've done something no trade has ever done before in America. What? What? Lincoln has spent the years of getting everybody the right to vote. In one hour, Luigi Basco comes along and takes it away. <laughs> You're going to be very lucky if the judge is only sentencing you to five minutes. Five minutes? In the electric Ooh. chair. <laughs> But Pasquale, I was I know, trying Luigi, to... I know, I know you was a trying, and believe me, you made a big impression out of me. Anyway, I'm a trying to help you. I sent Rosa down to the store to round up everybody, come to the courtroom. Only hope they come in time. Yeah, but Pasquale, you, you think, you think maybe they're going to help? I don't know. Rosa's a very mad at you. Why? You're going to make her a widow before she's even married to her. <laughs> All right, quiet in the courtroom, please. Next case, the state of Illinois versus Luigi Basco. Judge Clark presiding. Mr. Basco, take the stand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You want to... You want to judge... Judge Clark, you want to... All right, sit down. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I soundly swear to the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. Help me. You want to make sure to be honest with you? Well, of course, be honest. I'm going to understand the word of what you said. Luigi, you're the only man in the state who's going to be hanged and fried at the same time. <laughs> Quiet, please. Well, bailiff, he has a case in point. These procedures are routine to us. This may be his first appearance in court. Mr. Basco, do you swear to tell the truth? Judge, you cannot believe me. I'm always to tell the truth. I believe you. You are charged with printing up this newspaper with the apparent purpose of creating confusion among the citizenry and inciting mob demonstrations. Now, how do you plead? Judge, I'm a plead with my heart. What? Judge, you are I was... Uh, tell me, Mr. Basco, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Wait, wait, there comes my Rosa with a whole neighborhood. Rosa, come on! Hello, Judge. Hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. What does all this have to do with the case? You honor all these people are exhibits in the case. Now, I would have liked to call exhibit A. Me, Papa? No, Rosa, you are the whole alphabet. <laughs> I am exhibit A. Exhibit A, tell you story. Your Honor, I was going to Milwaukee this weekend to visit my sister. Uh-huh. Your Honor, I am exhibit B. I was going to vote only if it didn't rain. I see. Uh, judge, uh, I'm on an exhibition at two. I was not going to vote unless the army was a mind of my twins. What? <laughs> and I'm Exhibit B. Was too busy minding my fruit store, Your Honor. You know, I had a lot of insurance business to attend. That goes for the rest. Well, what's this got to do with Mr. Basco, the defendant? Judge, all these people who weren't going to vote or didn't care one way or the other, they're going to vote for sure now. Really? Yes. What made them change their minds? 
Well, if you tell the truth to judge, we should all be ashamed. But that crazy paper Luigi put out, that's made us realize how lucky we are to be able to vote. Well, Mr. Basco, what have you got to say? Nothing, Ioana. Only I'm a wish I had a 45 million in those papers. <laughs> well, Mr. Basco. While your newspaper was an excellent teaching method, I doubt if it is hardly feasible. The case is all very apparent to me now, and I must make a decision. Inasmuch as the complaint has been lodged against you, I must pass sentence. A sentence of hard labor. What? Yes. Until election day, seven days of hard labor. Teaching those who are more fortunate than you to exercise their right to vote. Hooray! Oh, oh, thank you, thank you, Judge. And just to make sure of the people here, I put you in their custody and they'll report to me on how you make out. I want all of you to report to me next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. I have selected uh, judge, uh, judge, uh, I just wanted to make sure you remembered it. Uh. We'll all meet at the polling booth in Mr. Basco's district, and that's where I'll get my report. Case dismissed. What it looked like was going to be the worst day of my life is it turned out to pretty good. This year, everybody in my neighborhood is going to vote. And Pasquale, who's forgot to register, he's made the Rosa promise him something. First of all, she's going to go on a strict diet so that by next Tuesday she can fit into the booth. <laughs> But even then, she's still not going to be the wife of your loving son, Luigi Bosco, the little immigrant. Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they want to remind you that it's a good idea to always have a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy in your purse or pocket. That little package of Wrigley's Spearmint is really a friendly companion. When your mouth needs refreshing, when you're feeling a bit tense, or simply when you want something good to chew on, just take out your package of Wrigley's Spearmint and chew a stick. Next time you go to the store, be sure to get a few packages of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Always have a package handy in your purse or pocket. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Mr. Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Dermott. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Spalding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olsen, and Sarah Berner as Mrs. Pellegrino. Music is under the direction of Lud Grubb. This is Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.